that, that are probably the two hardest but most enjoyable was the two years I spent off the day. All about that. Yeah. Well, well, it was crazy because it was in the 70s. Yeah. 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 It was nuts. Where'd you? Well, what do you think, gang? About 20 seconds. Okay. <clears throat> These are very sensitive today, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Do you think I could ever get the board to do like a barbershop between that? You can hope. It's a hard no. That's a hard no? <laughs> yeah. Second that motion. Okay. I heard that one. No one wants to hear me say it. I'll let it go. Here it is. Charlie? <laughs> you never heard me say Okay. Are we on? You're on. Well, well, welcome everybody to the uh, Thursday, May 9, 2024, Webster Town Board Meeting Workshop. Uh, we had three items on the agenda tonight, um, but the first one uh, is a resolution uh, that we're going to table. Um, this was for the town supervisor to sign the, uh, the New York State Environmental Facilities Corp. EFC $20 million grant agreement for the wastewater treatment plant phase two project. Um, I think Charlie we got a little aggressive on this, thinking that we would have the contract worked out with the EFC. We have a few things to look at. We do. And uh, but I'm, I'm hopeful um, that we can bring this back next week to a regular town board meeting um, and have it out to the board members, the contract, and also have it hopefully up on the town website uh, for the citizens see uh, a day or two before that meeting. So um, I know usually I don't <clears throat> do the resolutions to, to have me sign, but I think I can make a motion to table I think the resolution of the town supervisor to sign the uh, <coughs> NYS EFC grant <coughs> agreement. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Table. So now we have two presentation discussions tonight on the agenda. We're already three minutes ahead of time, John. I should have taken the bet. Yes, you should. Uh, and the first one is a discussion of the FEMA floodplain mapping changes within the town of Webster. And I think uh, our community director, uh, community development director, Joshua Tuzo, is going to present this. So go ahead, Joshua. Thank you, Supervisor Clarity. So yeah, the topic of tonight's presentation is to brief the board on some upcoming changes with the National Flood Insurance Program, which is also commonly referred to as the NFIP. So just a little bit of history and background. Um, the National Flood Insurance Program was originally created back in 1968, and there were two fundamental purposes for the program, <clears throat> number one being to reduce future flood damage, and number two being to protect uh, waterfront property owners. So <clears throat> the program uh, issues official flood insurance rate maps, which are referred to as firms, and these maps identify areas that are prone to flood. Um, so the program essentially governs development and construction activities in these areas that are subject to flooding. And it is a federal program, however, uh, each local municipality uh, that has waterfront or creeks and streams, uh, they are responsible for administering the national uh, program. So the town of Webster does currently have a floodplain, a flood damage prevention ordinance. It's chapter 170 of our town code. Um, it references the official uh, firms, the maps that identify the flood prone areas. And it also establishes a permit application and a review process uh, for projects that are proposed within these flood, flood prone areas. Um, so the code does require that there is a local floodplain administrator who is responsible for um, issuing the permits, evaluating the requests, and of course um, maintaining records to ensure that we're complying with the national program. So the official flood insurance rate maps, um, the current ones that we work off of 
were last updated uh, in August of 2008. Um, and a recent flood insurance study was performed for uh, lakeshore communities within Monroe County and actually others along the Lake Ontario shoreline. So with that, um, you know, there were recent flooding events in 2017 and 2019. Um, you know, we see that the climate continues to evolve. We, we do have more intense uh, storm events, it seems. So they thought it would be a good idea to revisit the official um, mapping for our area. And as you can recall, you know, with the ready grants and the program that the state had, uh, many property owners were able to get grant funds to uh, fill their properties or repair their uh, break walls. So given the change uh, in the Lake Ontario uh, outflow regulation plan and all of the work that's been commenced since those two flooding events, um, the maps for our area have been updated to reflect more recent uh, topography. Um, so basically, once the study was complete, uh, they did provide us with the revised maps, I believe back in February of this year. Um, and the new maps are set to become effective on July 31st of 2024. So a summary of the changes that are taking place when the new maps will take effect. Um, they've added a new category that's called the VE zone, and it basically factors in uh, wind and wave action along the Lake Ontario shoreline. Uh, previously, that was never factored into any of the hydrology modeling, uh, but with storms, you know, it does tend to have an impact on uh, the water elevation. So they've taken that into account. Uh, what they've also done is there is a, a process for homeowners and property owners that if they believe that they've been mapped within a floodplain area and they believe it's incorrect, you know, they, they've never witnessed actual flooding on their property, there is a formal process that they can go through um, to apply for an official map revision or an amendment. Um, and we have had quite a few of those um, in various portions of town. Um, so 20 of those were, were determined to be, um, you know, removed from the floodplain as these property owners went through that process. So what these new revised maps do is they also reflect the properties that have been removed from the floodplain since the last maps were adopted. <coughs> Now they've changed the numbering and the panel index numbers on some of the map panels for our community. And then there's also been some additional federal and state program changes since we adopted our local ordinance back in 2008. So the long and short of it is, um, you know, we've already, based after tonight's presentation, we've completed uh, the first two action items. We did review the preliminary draft maps back in February. I believe, if I remember correctly, um, actually about 90 properties are being removed from the floodplain, and I don't believe there's any additional new properties that are being added, even with these new categories and new mapping. Um, so we have to brief the local governing body of these program changes, which is the purpose of tonight's presentation. And then we have to compose a draft ordinance or amend our existing and provide that to the New York State Department of uh, Environmental Conservation for their review. Uh, once they've given us the okay, uh, we can then schedule and hold a public hearing on the new ordinance. And we are required to have the new ordinance in place by July 1st, which is effectively 30 days uh, before that July 31st effective date. So what I'm proposing that we do is to set a public hearing, have a resolution on the next town board meeting of May, 6th, May 16th to 
to set the public hearing, and that would take place, I believe, on June 8th. Is that the first? Uh, that would be the first town board meeting in June. Um, and then, depending on the feedback we get from the community, um, we have some time to tweak the proposed ordinance, and then I would propose bringing it back to the second meeting in June. Uh, for formal adoption so that we have it in place prior to the death. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to the board and be happy to uh, address any questions that we have. I have a question about the 90 properties to be removed. Do the property owners know or is there a process to communicate that they are being removed? Yes, I believe that um, there is a process. I, I'm not exactly sure that it's the town's responsibility to notify them that they're being removed, but anyone that's currently in these areas is required to carry flood insurance. So if they're being removed, I believe they're going to be notified that they're going to no longer be required to have flood insurance. But I will confirm. Who would notify them then? Uh, it could potentially be FEMA. Okay. They are the uh, overseers of the program, although we are, uh, as the local municipality, responsible for administering the program. All right. And it looks like the meeting is June 6th, is the Thursday? Okay. Right, well, June 6th, and it would be June 20th. Does that sound like a reasonable time frame, Charlie? To yes. Yes. Uh, you and I have discussed this already in terms of the timing and um, what, uh, what Josh and I are suggesting is that um, we repeal the entire chapter 170 that's in existence and replace it with a new one which uh, Josh and, well, mostly Josh and I will uh, Yes, and they have provided us with a model ordinance with a lot of the up-to-date language um, to include, we just have to customize it to our community. So it shouldn't be too much of a happy event. Josh, will the, <clears throat> excuse me, will the public have a chance to view these maps in advance of the public hearing? <clears throat> so actually when they were provided as preliminary maps back in February, we did promote them. At that time, we made them publicly available for folks to, to view them and we can certainly you know, continue to make them available. I will say um, we are in receipt of the hard copy maps that they sent us, so if anyone has any questions, if there's any residents that are curious to know if they're in or out or they're not sure, um, we have the official maps on file in our office at Town Hall, and anyone can also um, come in and take a look at them. We're also working on a public-facing GIS system uh, that would be accessible. Uh, a lot of the tools that we use internally will become accessible to the public, and this would be one of those layers that you would be able to type in your property address, turn on a layer, and see how it relates to your property. Great, thank you. Uh, and should we have a resident come to the public hearing? and dispute the fact that their property is in the flood zone, just in case that happens. Um, they already know that it is because they're paying additional insurance for being in the flood zone. Yes. But they're not happy with their designation. It's not the town board that takes up that uh, refute, is it? No. So that wouldn't necessarily hold up the process of when we need to adopt this ordinance. Correct. Okay. Um, I will mention that if we are unable to or unwilling to adopt the ordinance by the deadline given to us, it does put the town at risk um, for anyone living within the town of Webster to obtain flood insurance. So we would lose our ability for those folks to even get flood insurance. Yeah, certainly that was not my intention. I just wanted to make the public clear on, on where where they could take the complaint and how to get a resolution of that, that it wouldn't be with this board. Yes, that is correct. And okay. I think uh, we are 
one of the lucky communities in that we are actually removing those from the floodplain and not adding a whole bunch. Yes. So but we're adding some. And I believe there isn't one new property being added. Okay, good. So if, if it was flipped around, I could understand. Right. Yeah. But I don't anticipate there being very much pushback. That was good news. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. As usual, Josh, great presentation. Thank you. Absolutely. And we'll work with Charlie and Ken and Wolf and Dahlia and the resolutions we're setting in the public hearing to that advertising contact. So, okay, uh, we are five minutes ahead of time, John. I should have that. Well, the next item and last item tonight is. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to call it a presentation because, um, well, there is no one that's really going to present this. This uh, is a document uh, for discussion purposes that uh, I think is up on the screen right now. Um, and I want to thank Bridget Harvey for, uh, and Ken Doyle for taking raw data and researching raw data and, and helping put this together. But, Essentially, um, I don't know how much the town board members have gotten a chance to review this, um, but I thought it was a good discussion piece to have at a workshop um, for, for several reasons. One, um, Josh Artuso back in uh, mid to late 2022 uh, went to the planning board and the zoning board within our quarterly liaison meetings. Uh, not the liaison to those boards. And Josh did one of his wonderful presentations about a possibility of going from two planning board meetings a month and two zoning board meetings a month to one a month for each zoning plan. Um, and he did a very nice presentation that showed comparable other towns in Monroe County of our size and, and how many of these planning board meetings they were having monthly and zoning boards. <clears throat> he also tied that into the fact that we we're doing some code changes that we're going to take potentially up to 50% of the zoning board's uh, cases that they heard, setbacks or fences and or fence heights and uh, on property lines and all that. And it would reduce a lot of the things that they'd be hearing. Long story short, after some discussions, back and forth, pros, cons, the planning board, zoning board, we were both in agreement that let's go to one a month. And we rolled that out in January of 2023, and we are now 16 months into that. And Josh, I'd like to think that you would agree that it's gone very well. It has. And interestingly enough, we always reserve the right to have a special planning board or zoning board meeting in the month. <clears throat> in fact, uh, this month, we are having a special planning board meeting on May 21st because of a situation that happened Tuesday night, May 7th, that necessitated that, hey, you know what? We're not going to wait a month. We'll have a special meeting. But I would imagine that in the first 16 months, that the number of special planning board meetings, a second one during the month, or a special zoning board meeting, Second one during the month has been minimal, but not existing. Yeah, I'd say very one. I think there was one, maybe. Yeah, there, there have definitely been a couple when the when the state <coughs> rises, but by and large, we've been able to manage the caseload with one meeting per month. So, what got me thinking, especially is uh, our new video and our Mevo cameras, and you know, once we get this all perfected, which we're pretty darn close, aren't we, Dan and Bridget? But now we're going to move to who do we have come in here to run these uh, for the planning board meeting each month, for the zoning board meeting, and for the four town board meetings a month. Two town board meetings, first and third Thursday of the month, and second and fourth Thursday of the month being workshops, tonight being the second Thursday of the month. And I also got thinking about how uh, there has been some legitimate criticism that Citizens don't like workshops because it doesn't give them a chance to get on the podium like a regular board meeting does. 
And so I guess I was thinking about a lot of this stuff, and, and even more, and I'll save that uh, for discussion or whatever. And I thought, well, yeah, think tank-wise, what, what would the board think about maybe looking, going into 2025, which is eight months away, and going to the first and third Thursday of the month, where we do the the uh, the workshop at 5:30, but then we do the regular town board meeting at seven o'clock. Now the people that come to the workshop and listen to a couple presentations and who don't like the fact that they can't get on the podium, well, stick around at seven o'clock and get on the podium. Um, I don't think that this would change our ability to govern because for the most part, we've come under criticism for this too, we're doing resolutions at times at workshops where workshops are really not meant to do resolutions. But when you really go back, and I looked at some of the data earlier today, you'd be surprised from about 400 resolutions we did in 2023, I think we did six at workshops. So I think there's this feeling we do a lot at workshops, we don't. So we get our business done on the first and third Thursday of the month, and that would not change in that schematic. So it was just a starting point. Wanted to show, and Bridget and Kim showed what other town format meetings or their town board meetings and workshops are. Um, and I just thought it might be interesting to, there's no right answer. And it's not something I'm proposing as, this is just a framework of something. This is not cast in stone. Just thought it might be interesting for the board members uh, to banter around thoughts. And you know, pros and cons of the current structure, pros and cons of the potential 2025 structure, and then any next steps, if you want to call it that, if, if it's got momentum. I'm on my sword. I'm looking at the comparison of other towns, <clears throat> and quite frankly, I'm surprised at how infrequently some of them meet. We were too. I had no idea that a town board could meet just once a month. We were I thought there was more business. Especially given the size of uh, yeah. some of these towns. Mm -hmm. And how, how few of them actually hold workshops. It's very interesting. Uh, I think your proposal has merit. Oh yeah. But not even your proposal, but your your uh, suggestion. Yeah, and Patty, I'll tell you what, I mean I five thirty, seven, maybe six, seven thirty. So um so I'm um, it's the frame. So say we have a five thirty workshop. Mm -hmm. There's one item mm -hmm. on the agenda. We're not going to wait till seven. We're just going to roll right into no, the town board meeting, correct? Really? We cannot, and this is one of the, the there's the pros and cons, a con of the potential 2025 structure as it is written right there, is that if, first of all, there might be no workshop. We, we do have, right. we there's 24 possible workshops a year. I didn't go and do this data. I, I know 2019 and prior workshops happen about 14, 15 times a year out of 24 possible dates. We have been heavy on workshops the last couple of years. We also have been dealing with a lot of activity. So we've had a lot of workshops. Um, but even in April, I think the April 11th one, we didn't do a workshop. Uh, there there was at least two. Two. I think there was at least two that I can recall. Already this month? Or this no, no, year? no, no. In the last fall. Right. Was just so, it's funny, if there's no workshop, there's no workshop in the town board meeting would start in this schematic seven. But you bring up a good point, is that, I did, Betty, I think you're right, you can't start a formal town board meeting with resolutions prior to the time Correct. Yeah. you're supposed to start. So does that, you know, does that mean that you governor, which I think would be a bad idea, uh, you move the starting times of the regular town board meeting depending upon how many well, or, I, I, or potentially start the workshops at 6 versus yes. 5.30. Exactly. But you're suggesting that if there's one item, you right. just push the workshop up. Workshops well, yeah, I would, I would I would say that right. just start the workshops at 6. 
Well, it, let me put it this way. You know I love my data and Kim and Bridget help. <coughs> I, I have folders of the last couple of years where I keep notes of the, the agendas. I have when they started, when they ended. I didn't prepare, well, I was kind of busy the last couple of days. Um, to go and show what has been the average time of the workshop. Well, that'd be interesting. That'd be yeah. Good because, information. Yeah, because I yeah. think that would help. And that's why we're, we're eight months away from this. I'm not uh -huh. proposing we change this right. tomorrow. Um, and let's just, let me put the 800 pound gorilla out there. You know, for a town board, uh, an attorney and, and Josh and, and the people that have to come to this that work for the town, it's very uh, appetizing to go from four Thursday nights a year, a uh, month down to two. Sure. Um, it was very appetizing to the planning board and the zoning board. You were on the planning board when that happened. That didn't mean that your workload went down. Right. You know, it didn't. Um, but it, it did create a, I think there were some efficiencies that that created. Um, both on the board members and the town employees, but also as we educated Josh, the applicants, um, that you know there was an urgency. Like you, you, you don't have one in two weeks. You, you need to get this in, and we haven't gotten any negative kickback on that. That I've heard. I can't really envision the unintended consequences, good, bad, whatever, of going to something. That's why I wanted to broach it tonight, so you might think of something in two weeks. Hey, you know, here's something we didn't think about for change. Okay. Councilman Cahill surprised me because I was sure that he was going for a dinner break in between those two meetings. Well, you know, no, she just might have the scene. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's bringing snacks. <laughs> I think it's best if we can move up the time, you know, and make it more consideration. And I think it's, so just in case if people want to talk or anything like that, and we can get out on time as a, you know. Um, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in, this, in the stats as far as the average length of the workshops to see if we can, you know, start yeah. five or move it up to six if possible. And, and see, now this is a good discussion because, I mean, you, you could do 6.30 workshop, which once again, I've gotten some feedback from citizens that they don't like workshops because they don't get to talk. I also have heard that they don't like workshops because nobody can get out of work by 5.30 to come to them. And I am tired of this. So, 6.30 workshop, 7.30 the same time as the town board meeting. Yeah. Contrary to popular belief, if I give you the time, the average times of a workshop, but I'll give you the average times of town board meetings, they're not as long as you think. They go longer when we go into executive session uh, at the end. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it does make for the town board members that this is kind of overly simplified. You come in four times, four Thursdays a month for an hour, or you come in two Thursdays a month for two hours. I think you're going to get the same amount of time invested, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I see something very advertising about only twice a month and doing it for two hours and four times a month for one hour. Oh, it's like well, it's more, it, I think it's more efficient. Uh, my question is if there's something magical or magical about starting the board meetings at 7.30. Because I'm sort of, I'm, I've been a proponent or I would love to see them start at 7 because the planning board meetings start at 7, the zoning board meetings, are, oh, the other meetings start at 7. So just for consistency, starting at 7 would be nice get out a little earlier, so moving that up would be good. It would be helpful to see the stats of a workshop, how long they are, mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, if a workshop is 30 minutes, I, I don't know, then, then you just have extra, like, non-productive time waiting for the other meeting to start. That's my... That would be my only thing. Um, and I don't know, Charlie, from like a legal perspective, if, if one meeting ends and then you have that break time, 
and now there's no official meeting or begin here, and do we have a quorum? Well, I think, I think, no, I think you're okay, because you're only making decisions. Okay. Uh, I, say, I, I find this interesting. I mean, it's just yeah. a small city, or maybe not a small, maybe a medium sized city. We only have one meeting a month, no workshop. Yeah, I work with a couple of people who are on town boards for um, Rush and Wheatland, and I talked to folks at Aronic White who were very surprised that we met four times a month. And I, I just said, I don't know, I don't know any different. That's all, I, that's all I'm familiar with. I, I usually get the same reaction. People are incredulous that we meet four times, but no. Well, I, I just, like, I think it should be better around 6 or 6.30 instead of 7, at least too late. You know, I mean, for consideration for the board meeting. Well, I think, well, by looking at this, in Penfield, they meet only twice and look like they have an um, efficient, you know, have good friends in there, and they don't have to be like four times like we do, but they meet around 6.30, 6 o'clock. So I think that's, you know, that when you move up the time, you could have more agenda and everything to talk, and then people can come in and give them, you know, um, their opinion, and speak on the floor, and we can get out on time. The only problem with that is if we if we were to move the town board meeting up to that early time, then that bumps the workshop up to an extremely early time where yeah. many people wouldn't be able to attend the workshop. Yeah. Or we could do it like they do, we just do one workshop and then one town board. And then just have, you know, spread out like that. It's convenient soon. And this way we don't have to sit and see if, you know, there's a gap between. Try to make it more efficient. I, I do like the idea of not having a gap between um, meetings. Um, I just, there seems to be a lot of things going on in, in Webster. So to have just one planning board a month and one workshop a month. But we do want the time, so it's going to make it longer. It's not like we just, you know, we have more agendas to be in one day instead of spread out in two or three days. I mean, twice. Well, if, we move, if, we move it, if we move it up, there's a certain amount of people that will not be able to A, attend, or B, watch the town board meetings because they're getting home from work, sitting down and eating dinner, and that will be while we are having a board meeting. So, it's I also think that we might be making too much of the gap in between the two meetings because most of us, I was the exception tonight, I came in on two wheels because I was in a town meeting until close to 5 o'clock and had Sorry. to sit home. Um, most of us get here 15 minutes before the meeting starts. Well, the 5.30 meetings, and I'm being selfish to point this out, sometimes it's very difficult for me to get out of work sure. in time to get here for the 5.30 meeting. And because, you know, we start at 6.30, and there's a lot of times I'm still at work until yeah. late, so it's okay. very, it's, it's difficult. I, I used to experience the same thing when I was working. I used to slide into meetings in my scrubs yeah. because I could barely get here by right. 5.30. Which is why it would be very interesting to see the duration of the workshops. Mm -hmm. um, because if we could move the starting from 5.30 to 6 o'clock, I think that would be beneficial. And that would cut down on <clears throat> the gap between the workshop and the town board meeting. But fundamentally, I, I like the idea of coming in twice. The other thing that I'm a proponent of with respect to this suggestion is that it will give people the opportunity to watch the workshop and we may be presenting something that they want to talk about during the board meeting. So it gives the public an opportunity to comment, right, to your point, which is which is a great thing because we want to give the public as many opportunities to speak as possible. And by doing it in this manner, 
I think it'd be very beneficial to the public. I like the idea of starting at six o'clock as well, because five thirty is sometimes difficult for me. Yeah. Uh, to get here, considering I work all the way in Henrietta. So that's where our office is too. Yeah, but you're all over the. You can be all over the place. Yeah, if I got yeah, projects in Hilton. Over New York, so yeah. I, th I think we could take a more critical look at this once we get those statistics on the average time of, of workshops. Although when I think about it, usually have more than four items on those agendas. Well, that I just it, it, as a quick look back, um, and we allow 15 minutes per item. Uh, it, it would force us to curtail some of the additional discussion that's not really necessary sometimes. It would cause us to stay on target. Yeah. yeah. I think the word that comes to mind with me is the word pithy. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, I think if you go back, and I, I know where this is being pointed, by the way, and the confused chart. But, uh, workshops are not where my verbosity causes extensions of time. Honestly, they are not. It's the regular town work. The workshops, I handed the town out to the presenter, and then it is what it is. But can I, if I get the stats of the last uh, 2023 and year to date 2024, recent, the most recent, about, about 16, 17 months of board meetings and also workshops, and I'll get them back to the town board um, within the next couple of weeks, and you know, maybe we can reconvene on this. I am saying, well, first of all, I know at the org meeting we said this is this is what we set up as a resolution. We have our regular board meetings on the first and third Thursday. And I can't remember if we say workshops and that. Charlie, I would say, you, you know, I said at the beginning of 25, but if there is momentum on this thing, and we, we have a lot more flexibility on workshops. We cancel workshops. We don't have right. workshops. Right. Now, board meetings with resolutions, that's a little different. I think we got to stick to. Well, it's you know, the schedule that's set at your organization. So yeah, you're know, right. effectively legislated. Right. Yeah. So those are seven thirty, the first and third Thursday of the month. That's fact, and I, I don't know if we really should screw around with that in a year. No, but, I don't know. Um, it's not a good but, idea. But I don't know if we have any flexibility to say, hey, we're decided that we're moving uh, workshops to six o'clock first and Thursday. Thursday uh, for the remainder of the year starting in October or whatever. It'd be interesting to know. It does. Well, you, you know, pointed out it really workshops are optional. They really are. Um, but I'll get those stats um, because the one thing I glean from what is, hey, this is a good, uh, this is 23 minutes we talked about this. I have one quick question. Shoot away. Just a procedural question. Can you amend the organizational meeting? Like, can, it, would it be unrealistic to make an amendment to the organizational meeting? Just just do another and say that the meetings are going to start at 7 instead of 7.30. If we wanted to make that change as well this year. I, I, I think you can do that. And I, the reason I laid this out is a potential for 2020 is, uh, well, we got seven and a half months left this year. I just, I don't know, I didn't know if I'd come to this and you guys would be like, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. And I'd be like, okay, well, you know. But it looks as though, you know, and I, I'm not surprised because we had that, Josh, uh, almost immediately with the planning board in the zone. I, I think almost immediately when you present it, First thing I know is that when you showed comparables, there was some incredulous from the planning board and zoning board. Wow, they only meet, just like you guys said, wow, I can't believe Greece only meets once a month. I find that's amazing myself, that that's the only time they meet. Um, I've heard some other things that they, if they have 20 agenda items, they do a, what do they do, Josh? It's like, they do like a blanket approval. A blanket, yeah. uh, and it's over in five minutes. I am not suggesting that. <laughs> no. 
No. No. no. You're going to get some pushback. No, I would never We're suggest. And, and, and to be honest with you, you know, that's where I get proposed, John, is that making sure a department head or somebody explains what we're right. voting on individually, I think, is a real value to people in the audience watching live or watching the team. Because on the surface, you look at a resolution, you're like, I don't know what that means. But if somebody gives that two-minute explanation, whether it's Paul Adams, whether it's Josh, whether it's whatever, I just think the layman at home appreciates, oh, okay, that's what that means. So well, speaking blanket of, resolution would be awful. Yeah, speaking but, of the layman at the it, workshops, I think, are very valuable because you have all the board members here um, in public as a forum, so it's a open meeting, and yet uh, you're able to discuss things as a group, which you right. normally would not be doing. Well, it'll be interesting to receive some feedback from the public regarding our discussion tonight. Geez, Bridget, I wonder if you will get anything on Facebook or whatever as people watch this live. Or um, uh, what the heck, that. Dave? What do you got? What do you think? Thumbs up, well, thumbs down. I, I don't understand why you need the workshops at all. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. We're not going to get into that, but um, and it's funny, we use the workshops uh, as kind of like, hey, uh, let's present and explain something and get some town board questions, whatever, and then the next week at a regular board meeting, we might be doing the resolution. Uh, it's a nice uh, lead-in to a resolution. Whether we would go to this schematic and say, hey, we did a workshop at 6 o'clock and did a presentation and they're doing the resolution at seven, I don't think we'd have to look pretty well. close at, uh, you know, what are we trying to shoehorn in? Right. Um, the same way we have had this discussion about do you do a public hearing and then a minute later vote on the resolution, and that's a. It's not why well you'd rather wait that, a couple though. weeks. So, whatever. There is no hard, fast, true way to do all this, but. Um, no, I'm going to get the stats and we'll see what kind of, re uh, for anybody watching um, who watched this, uh, by all means, uh, call, email, Facebook, uh, comment, uh, I don't know if you can, my old guy, I don't know how YouTube works, I don't think YouTube has it. You can comment, you can comment. Can you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to go on. Um, all right. Well, listen. Uh, anything else? Good discussion. I was really on the back with Jen. Well, I'm going to keep talking. It's not over yet. I have something. Oh, no. I have something. So did, you might lose your you might lose your bet. I don't know. We didn't. That, know. that is one thing that I have found very peculiar, being the newest member on the board. That there isn't a lot of discussion. Like, and, and you can't have discussions outside of the board meetings, right? So, it's. Um, where you can't just have the support. Right. right. Well, right. So, like, something like this comes onto an agenda. It's like, I didn't feel like I can ask any questions about it. So, like, the first time we're talking about it is right here. Being the change of the meeting times. I don't know what else. I, I guess, um, um, I guess the other thing that was difficult for, for me, just speaking about it, was the issue with um, the the traffic stop, the, the traffic stop incident, and not having a whole lot of details either coming into this meeting, um, where I know Patty, you was the liaison to the police, and, and Tom, you overseeing the whole town. It, there was a lot more information about that that. That you, that both of you had, that we didn't have coming into the meeting. So for some of us, I don't know, for me or for John or for Jimmy, we're just kind of coming in and hearing everything for the first time with everybody else. And um, I, 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 I don't know that that's. It just seemed a little awkward. I think. A little piece of advice, if. Nothing else similar to we always joke about the advice that the chairman of the planning board gave you when you were new on that board, yeah, which was 
What was his advice to you? His advice was to take the cotton out of my ears and put it in my mouth. Exactly. Um, I learned early on in four years, and of course it was a, a different administration, but if you don't ask, you won't find out. So um, I would encourage anyone who isn't a liaison to any department that if you're concerned with what's going on in those departments and you want to know before we get to the meeting or even if it's not on the agenda, it's just something that's going to come up, by all means reach out and ask questions. And, and I do know the chief has agreed to uh, yes. you, both you and Councilman Kay help me meet with him. Um, and our, our department has are more than gracious and happy to, because it's in their best interest to have an informed board, and they really do appreciate that. I did. I did go to the, the yes. sewer. I did the sewer tour, and I'm very much looking forward to meeting with uh, Chief Holmeyer mm -hmm. and understanding more about the police protocol and the discretion and, and how they're trained because I, I feel that will make me a more informed board member Certainly. and then be able to address questions that you just get out in the public or at, at work or wherever, whatever. Um, yeah, that I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm explaining it right, but that is, that is one piece that is, okay. I'm, Still feeling my way through. I, I think Patty, excellent advice. Um, and I don't want to put Patty on the spot. But uh, no, I gotta think how to word this. Um, just because people use some buzzwords around social media, whatever, like transparency and things like that. Um, I think we've this this administration, not just me, but everybody, has really tried to commit the last four and a half years to uber communication about things um, relative to maybe how it was done before. But since you're coming in with no point of reference, um, it's easy to understand why you would have the feelings that you just uh, referenced. Um, certain weekly communications that I try to get to the town board. I don't think that was a thing in years past, uh, Patty and it was John. Not, no. No. Um, but you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And the one thing, uh, now that it is, now that we're talking about this, it's why not? I'll, I'll, I'll put a rivet on this. When that situation happened with the police incident, okay? you're talking about. Uh, I know that Patty and I, Patty being the liaison of the police and myself, were in two to four meetings a day with communication, with, with various people, because um, it was an evolving situation. And it needed, it, it, it had sensitivities beyond me. Um, I failed because I left the rest of the town board members uh, with no communication from me for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday leading up to last Thursday's town board meeting. And 96 hours of no communication is going to make people fester and have their minds filled with all sorts of things, especially when they are, are just watching the news and watching body cam and not getting any communication from me. I failed on that. And that if I if I had to do over again because I did communicate with you guys on Saturday and I did communicate with you guys on Sunday and then once I got in on Monday and Patty and I were in more meetings than you could take a stick at, I did not put out communication phone email, whatever, to the four board members. And it's very natural that you guys are getting hit by every bit of information on the news, all that stuff. It's natural to go through that, so. Well, I appreciate um, you listening to my questions and my concerns and taking action in setting up the time with Chief Kohlmeier to 
you know, to help fill that void yeah. for yeah. for me and, and I know John's taking John's gonna right. take you yeah, up on that as well. Really some, uh, you know, certain people I I we don't we're transparent. <laughs> I hate the term because I think it's overused lately. We got nothing to hide. Um, amazingly enough, I think we have such an immense amount of information that is coming our way all the time. And I'll say as the supervisor, I can't believe four and a half years in that every single day, this is not an exaggeration, one, two, three new things I find out about our organization or our town. How can I still have that kind of newness coming at me? Shouldn't I know it all by now? And then I got to parse through and say, well, how much of this do I throw at the other four town board members? I could be sending you guys updates on the hour. I don't think you'd like that. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a challenge. You know, when is there too much information coming at you? When is there not enough information? When when is the porridge just right? And uh, communication is an art, right, Bridget? It is. And it is never something that I'm going to perfect. I'm a student of it, but we are trying to get better, and I learned. I learned a big lesson last week that um, I don't know if you know if we'll ever get something like that again. But if, if I'm in the trenches with the liaison for uh, some department, I'll make sure that there's the other three board members are kept apprised uh, daily or whatever. There are certain situations that need daily updates. Um, the last one that we had here in Milga, when COVID hit, in uh, March 13th or whatever it was, 2020, um, and I'm two and a half months into being supervisor, so you know, who, who am I? What am I? But I knew, I'd seen this before. I'd seen crises when I owned a mortgage company in 08, and the world went to hell in a handbasket. And I got the town department heads in this room, socially distanced, daily. Because they needed daily communication, because the rules of engagement in that crisis were changing daily. And I think we allowed the town board members to be on the phone for those things. Is that correct, Penny and Josh? Josh, I think you were here for that? Yeah. That's what you got to do. You got to communicate hourly, daily, when that's happening, because, and, and now, I would have lost it, but, but when things like that are happening, you know, not to be overly philosophical, the five stages of grief, change nobody likes. You need time as a human being for your brain to absorb the change and accept it. When things are changing every day, you didn't get time to absorb what changed yesterday. And now you're coming into the meeting and finding out, hey, you know how the governor said that we're only going to have 25% of non-essential people go home? Well, today it's 50 Hey, remember yesterday when they said 50%? Well, today it's 75. And ironically, right? both he and Chris are now walking all that stuff back. Just saying, Go figure. the rules of engagement are changing by the hour. And when that happens, which should happen in 08 to my business, I learned through that you need to over communicate, get your lieutenants <laughs> into the room, maybe hourly, twice a day, once a day because things are changing and you got to be on top of it. We did that with the situation, Patty, myself, and other people. The mistake I made is that there were other people like you and the other two board members that should have been made aware of certain things. When it wasn't, we came in here on Thursday. We had a bunch of speakers on Thursday. The perfect storm. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Hey, what do you say, Johnny? Are we done? We're done. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a great night. You know what? You would have bet.